Hi, welcome to A&B Jukebox Repair, your one-stop source for road jukebox repair service and replacement parts. We also want to welcome you to our new You Can Do It Jukebox Repair video series. Today's segment is going to be on removing and installing a CDM4 player into a row CD mechanism. My name is Bruce Wentworth and I'll be your instructor today. We're going to proceed now. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the CDM4 mechanism. The CDM4 mechanism came out in around 1991 and they kept it for about three or four years before they came out with the next generation player, the CDM12. The CDM4 mechanism was a very dependable mechanism in its day and it still is today when you have a good CD player and a good CD4 when you have a good mechanism control unit everything works great. Um, one of the misunderstandings about these players is that a lot of people think that these aren't, cannot be repaired anymore. Um, my company has been repairing them for the past 16 years and we are still repairing them. So there is a source to get them repaired if you decide you want to get your player repaired. Um, how do you identify a bad CD player? Um, well, a CDM4 player, what happens when it starts to go bad is that it will sometimes cut out in the middle of a song. Like you might be playing, you know, it might play for about five or ten seconds and then reject. Or it might stop and start, stop and start, and then spin backwards. That's another thing that um, happens when the player starts to go bad. The third thing is the player, the CD will come on to the player and not spin at all. And that's another sign that it could be the CD player is, could be failing. When this happens, it is either the CD player or the mechanism control that's bad. So it's hard to identify which one it is, so it's best to send both units in to be tested when you're not sure, or to give us a call, and we'll help to try to diagnose it with you over the phone. Okay, the first thing we're going to do when, when, we, when we take out a CDM4 player, install it, is this. First thing you want to do is to shut the power off to the jukebox. You've got to make sure the power is totally off. When you know that for sure, these lights on the mech control won't be light lit up. They'll be totally out. Then you want to touch a piece of metal with your hand to discharge any static electricity in your body. This is important because the CDM4 is, players are very sensitive to static. And static electricity could blow your laser on the player. So there's only a couple steps of taking out a CDM4 player. It's not very hard, and I truly feel that you can do it if you just follow these basic steps. Shut the power off. Touch a piece of metal on it before you take it out. Lift up the hold down plate. Remove this little L bracket that's holding that keeps it from falling out. Put that aside. Now, this player, you do not want to unscrew the four corners of the legs. Okay, you do not want to do this. You want to lift the player right out of the grommets. You can do the front first, just lift up like that, and then do the back like that. Now the player is totally disengage from the grommets. The next thing you want to do is to go in the back, push on the tab, and pull the plug out, straight out. The next thing you're going to do is tilt it to a little bit to the side, and sometimes you may want to bend down a little bit. Push on the tab, and you want to push on this tab right here, and then you're going to work it side to side. This one hasn't come out in a while. You can tell it's kind of like that, and the play comes straight out. I'm going to show you a different player right now. This is what some people do when they take out the player. Some people take out the force post on the player and, and then they take it off and try to take the wires out. To do this, a lot of times what happens is you, you lose the support of this little interface bracket here by removing the legs. And in doing that, you cause possible damage to the ribbon, the ribbon cable. If you damage this cable, these have very fine wires and they can get torn or broken very easy. So you want to really prevent, you really don't want to unscrew the four corner legs. You want to pull it out of the grommets just like we did. Okay, you want to keep it intact, all four legs and the interface. If you, like I said, you see this interface just kind of floating around wherever it wants. You do not want to do this. It could get damaged by taking it out. It could be damaged by shipping it to us. So. Keep the four legs on it. Do not remove them, okay? Just pull it out of the grommets and then put it aside. And then again, if you have an anti-static bag, put it in that. 
before you box it up and ship it to us. That's the CDM4 player, okay? I'm gonna show you with another harness over here. One of the biggest problems, now we're gonna to go to install it. One of the biggest problems when installing CDM4 player, as you see, the word CDM4 is, is listed right there in front, below the spindle, okay? CDM4 industrial player. One of the issues you have is the orientation of the plugs going into the unit, okay? A lot of people um, do not orient the plugs correctly. Here's the two plugs that you're going to be working with. This big one goes on the bottom, and this smaller one goes to the top. When you have a player like this, sometimes people reverse the connection thinking this is the way it goes. Okay? You see that the wires are facing the back of the, facing towards the back of the player, towards the back of the mechanism or the jukebox. If you do this and you power it up, you're going to blow this laser. It's just going to smoke. Okay? So you want to, this is the critical thing. It's just, all you have to do is orient these plugs, these two plugs, where they go, the proper way. And to do so is like this. The bottom plug will go in like this. And the wires are going to be coming out facing the front of the jukebox. That's the proper way to, for that plug. The back plug, when you go to plug it in, is going to have the wires facing down. And the plug goes in like that. Okay? So that goes like that. This goes like this. That's the proper way to plug in a, a player. So the wires are facing going towards the front on the bottom plug and towards the bottom on the back plug. If you do this, everything will be great and you'll be fine. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and plug the player back, plug the player back in over here. To where it goes. I'm gonna put this out of the way. And we're going to go to install the player. The first thing you want to do when you go to install the player is make sure the wires, you can move them around a little bit like that, which you can, okay? And that the you got the front and the back properly oriented. As you can see, these posts are just going to stick into the holes of the rubber grommets. You have four holes, they line up like that. And also the spindle lines up with the magnetic hub that comes down on top. So that's the proper way, okay? You see that the CDM4 player is to the right, and the magnetic hub and the spindle perfectly line up. If you reverse this, you're gonna find that not only does it doesn't fit, the player won't fit at all because of this interface, so that's good. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna plug the bottom plug in. Okay, so you're gonna reach up at a little bit of an angle here, and you're just going to push the plug in one side of it, work it in side to side till it's in. Okay, remember, now you're going to put the top plug in, the suck back plug, and that just goes in, straight in. Now you're going to take the player and stick it in the grommets. Push down all the way. Make sure each corner is all the way down. It's all done. So again, the wires are facing to the front on the bottom of the player. For the, for the bottom plug, like so. And then the back plug, the wires are facing down. Okay, if you did this and you've got, you got everything correct, now you can go ahead and test it. Go ahead and put the power on, select a song, and watch everything come down. Now, for some reason, if the CD is hitting against this magnetic hub, this plate, when it comes down on the CD, going to grab a CD here. When, you, when it's on the CD, you, this, this should ride freely, okay? If this CD is hitting against the magnetic, against the hold down plate, it's and dragging, it's telling you that you probably didn't put the player all the way down in the grommets. One of the corners could be up like this, and as you can see, the, speed, the CD's not spinning. It's, it can't spin because you didn't push it all the way down. So make sure everything's all the way down when you when you do that. And, and then you can go ahead. I gotta push this one down and test it, test it out. That is that is all there is to it. Now you've got the player fully installed, you're ready to go.
power it up and give it a test. If there's any issues or any problems, give us a call. A&B Jukebox Repair will be happy to help you over the phone and help you get, get your jukebox up and running again. Remember, you can do it. So don't be afraid and just take one step at a time and everything will work out great. So I want to thank you for being a part of this video session with us. Um, we want to, we appreciate your time and we hope that you'll join us for our next session. So until then, see you later. Bye-bye.